so this is just a quick uh, video to show how the uh, the flash and test utility works this is actually uh, primarily for trends who are doing the manufacturing for the mega 65 uh, to show them what they'll uh, be able to do to easily test the hardware and to put to flash the first bit stream onto the mega 65 and part of the reason this is needed is that the uh, standard vivado tool for flashing uh, FPGAs and their attached flash for some reason can't talk to the flash on the uh, the production boards that now have uh, a double size flash uh, we're not really sure why uh, but uh, given that we already have a, a flash capability in the Mega 65 uh, we're going to use that so uh, there's a, a few things that we need to cover off here uh, the first is we can see a bunch of files up here on the screen uh, those files are the ones that need to be on the SSD. So the ones that are in capitals need to be on the, the SD uh, card. Um, that should ideally be on the internal SD card, given that you guys are going to be assembling with the lids open, I imagine, anyway, because you have to plug keyboards and things in, and you need to get a jumper, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, that I think that that uh, probably makes sense, because it's going to be it's quicker and easier to get the... Um, uh, go to the right camera. Uh, so the SD card is just easier to uh, to load uh, and unload. Uh, now, talking about that jumper, let me see if I can pan my camera in. You can see there's this little bank of uh, four switches here. Now the third switch has to be over to the left. Uh, so at the moment, they're all to the right. So I'm just going to move the third one to the left. And so we can now see uh, the bottom two are to the right. The third one is to the left. It's a little bit hard to see with the camera here. And this top one is actually over to the right as well. So in this configuration, uh, the uh, Mega 65 bitstream that we're going to load on in a moment uh, enables writing to the SPI flash. So this is so that the, the flash program can work. Uh, so, and obviously you have the keyboard plugged in. If I just pan back out for, go for a moment. Uh, again, I think you, know, you guys will be uh, familiar enough uh, with this whole process that the, um, uh, the keyboard connector will go on. We also need to have a couple of joysticks because uh, joystick testing is part of this process uh, as well. Uh, so I've got a, a couple of our uh, joysticks here uh, that we'll use as part of this. Right, so the first step that we need to do uh, is to load a bitstream on because you'll be uh, working with boards that have no uh, bitstream on this. I'm just going to Pull this up so that I can monitor what's going on there a little bit as we go along. Okay, so we'll run that, uh, and what we will see as we do that, and you might be doing this using Vivado uh, from under Windows. So it's the only part that I'm using here that actually is using Linux, but it doesn't need to. And what you will see if you have all that set up, it will immediately come up like this. Uh, this is assuming that you have the Ethernet connected to something um, and that there is DHCP available. So this is doing an Ethernet test because DHCP resolution requires sending and receiving. Uh, so if it says my IP is, and it doesn't matter what it is, uh, then you know that it, uh, the Ethernet has passed. And so it's saying pass the Ethernet. Uh, so now we can run uh, some tests. So if I get you can see the uh, uh, the keyboard as I go through. So I'm literally just going to press the one key uh, on the keyboard, and that will begin uh, running some tests. So you see the red, green, blue block and some grayscale blocks. And what we will hear out of the speakers, you can hopefully hear that. It's a bit of an annoying tone. If you can hear that out the left speaker, uh, assuming again that you've got uh, speakers plugged into the three and a half mil jack, um, we'll say pass, and then you hear a different tone out of the right speaker. And if that's good, we say pass. And then it's asking about the uh, the joysticks. So this is the point where we 
actually use the uh, the joysticks and we do as it says so the joystick in port one push left push right push up push down uh, and just do these nice and uh, gently so that you don't do any diagonals because that will uh, confuse it because it's testing that each of the lines works correctly uh, and so that's that and complete so that one, that one goes through quite quickly And then we simply hit the uh, was the reset button on the side of the machine again, so it'll do the Ethernet test again. And once we have the, the the flashing border like that, we know that we're good. So now we can go through and we can flash the um, uh, the bitstream on. So this requires you to have a .core file, so which I didn't have uh, on that other display, uh, but Detlef will give you. Uh, on the SD card as well. So we press 2 to flash and it will show you the details about the flash chip. Uh, so this is obviously on an R3 board with the uh, the 256, uh, so 32 megabyte uh, part. And so it's telling us that it's got 4K parameter sectors and all this other stuff. That's all fine. Uh, so long as it detects it, uh, then press any key, it'll think, and that's scanning the SD card. So this is the point where it's looking for a .core file. Uh, these have to be in capitals on the SD card, even though it shows up lowercase here. Uh, so you will choose what will presumably be the only one on there, and you'll hit enter, and it will just be double checking that the hardware ID matches. Uh, again, we press any key, uh, and now it will go through and uh, erase the contents of the flash. And this is <laughs> where we've got considerable improved speed compared to what we used to have. Uh, so this used to be as slow as a wet week, uh, but we can now erase, as you can see, at over 300 kilobytes a second. I think that the theoretical limit is about 500k. Uh, so there's some hardware acceleration in for the um, uh, the flash reading and also actually for checking the emptiness uh, of sectors. Uh, and then we're writing. Uh, this is a little bit slower. Um, I'd like to improve it a bit more, to be honest, because it, we can actually write, uh, in theory, up to about one megabyte a second. Uh, which is pretty nice with this flash. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, it goes pretty quickly. And you'll see that the because the bitstream is not 8 meg, when it gets to the end, it will just jump to the end. Uh, and we'll see the same thing happening here with the, um, the verification. Uh, this was also slow as a wet week and is now quite a bit faster. And so all up, this whole process takes about 85 to 90 seconds. Uh, so I did a benchmark test using Vivado to flash uh, a bitstream on the uh, uh, the same uh, hardware uh, and that takes about 165 seconds so we're at twice the speed of Vivado uh, I've always known that the Vivado flashing thing is a, a bit inefficient for a variety of reasons uh, and so there we go and it's given a stat so that took um, 87 seconds so at this point uh, it'll actually ignore you can't actually press any key to uh, continue uh, that's all flashed so you could now turn the machine off and turn it on uh, and it will just boot up so if it powers up then you know that uh, you've flashed the bitstream on fine um, it will still come up into the tests because it still has that SD card in there uh, with that image on there uh, for doing the tests um, so yeah that's really the process um, so the only, as we said, I had those files there. Detlef will give you the, the correct files because it will be the .core file. Uh, and I've actually also realized that the uh, the name of the, the D81 file actually needs to be different. It needs to be mega65.d81. Uh, but we'll get all of that nicely sorted out. Uh, yeah, so that's the process. Uh, and for the, the general Mega 65 community, though, those speed ups that I've put into the um, this JTAG flash utility for production uh, will find their way back into the uh, the flash menu. So when we hold down, whoops, if you hold down the no, no scroll key when you turn the Mega 65 off and on, uh, it will come up into the, uh, the flash menu. And so this is currently still slow because uh, I haven't put those speed ups in, uh, but I'm going to, and then that will be uh, really nice and fast. So yeah, that's the uh, 
uh, the gist of what we need there. And whoop, look at that, even though it's a funny time of day for you guys, there's three of you uh, tuning in. Uh, I'm just gonna stop the stream there um, just so that we don't have a long video for the uh, for trends to uh, uh, to pick up. Uh, but I'll be back on Discord uh, if you've got any questions. Um, so you can go to mega65.org and find the uh, the link to the Discord server if you're not already there. But hopefully you guys are already there since that's presumably how you spotted that uh, I was online for the moment. Okay, catches.